Trudeau sucks, but let me describe why in so many ways. But let me divulge what I will be covering here. Trudeau has done a lot of wrong, which has annoyingly been swept under the rug by liberals for the longest time, and Trudeau has since seen no repercussions for the heinous things like the We Charity Scandal, Trudeau's overreaction to the Freedom Convoy, and then his eventual fleeing from Canada during this peaceful protest. That makes a lot of sense, right? The leader of a country fleeing that very country when something against him that is peaceful happens. But then we've also, towards the end, got some great news. But you'll have to stick by to hear that. But without further ado, on July 27, 2020, we start the conversation talking about we. But what is we, I hear you ask? Because it's kind of a stupid name for an organization. Well, I'll tell you, it is called We Charity. I know, great name. But they were an organization that Trudeau decided to outrage people by being scandalous. But I'll let this article from the Winnipeg Sun articulate this in a much better way than I can. Money is always easy to spend when you have not had to work for it. Not until two weeks ago did Finance Minister Bill Morneau admit that the program required tweaking. Manitoba Premier Brian Pallister has been pushing for adjustments to the program for at least two months. Though, I do not think that even he knew how deep the rot was. His push was to reduce the financial penalty for working more. The road to financial heck is paved in good intentions. Perhaps the more egregious example of Trudeau's utter lack of respect for the elaborate is the We Charity scandal, in which the government approved paying We a reported $33 million to handle a $912 million Canada Student Service Grant to effectively pay student volunteers, a concept which warps the mind to begin with. The real problem, of course, is that the contract was not put out into tender and his office and Morneau were both involved in selecting we to run the program. Trudeau's wife, mother, and brother have all been paid handsomely to speak at we events while Morneau's daughter has been hired to work for the charity and has accepted 41,000 in trips directly from the organization, which he randomly decided to repay to the company last week. The program we was to administer was also largely duplicitous in its own existence. There are many programs, provincially and federally, designed to fund students' employment and no-profit employment. This is one hand washing the other while trying to buy publicity. How did they not see these conflicts between them and their families and this charitable organization? Said Malcolm Bird, an associate political science professor with the University of Winnipeg. How they keep doing these things and not suffering any public rebuke is astonishing to me. Well, I mean, they technically did get some rebuking. For what it's worth, Reddit was set a flame from this action. Here, I'll uh, read some of these out. And we're just gonna go top down on this. This continues to look worse by the day. No wonder we canned the deal once the spotlight was on them. Basically, their whole Canadian board resigned when the contract was awarded before the scandal hit. Looks to me like they knew about shady dealings and felt uncomfortable about it. Gotta isolate that liability. Unfortunately, the general public doesn't care. It really sucks that corruption like this gets swept under the rug so regularly. And I could not agree anymore. But I already hear you out. How much did Trudeau get away with in this scandal? To which I sadly have to report back with a piece from Wikipedia, saying that Trudeau made away with $425,000. And for the American folk, that is just over 310,000. Can anyone remind me what Trudeau said against the Conservative Party from the other day? Wasn't it something like... Trudeau countered that Poliva continues to use cheap attacks and slogans while he tries to hide from the fact that he is standing with the wealthiest Canadians and against the idea of them paying a little more so that the young Canadians can buy a home. 
Yeah, that is right. It's Trudeau complaining about the opposite that apparently cares less about the young Canadians than Trudeau does. Right? Because that makes complete sense. The guy who has stolen money that was for charity, no less, is the same stupid who talks about conservatives not caring about the young Canadians. Look, I can't put this in any more plain English, and my French is non-existent, so apologies for that. But Trudeau does not care about the quote-unquote young Canadians. He only thinks about him, himself, and nobody else. He is not pro-Canada. He is only pro-himself. He is so pro-himself, in fact, that he will actively trample over the young Canadians that he supposedly cares about just to get a fat paycheck. But let us look at an example of Trudeau being anti-Canadian with the Freedom Convoy, which was as peaceful as any protest during that time period in the Western world. Our southern brothers were dealing with raids and a specific group that protects certain things. I can't say the name of said group. But meanwhile, Canada just has a bunch of trucks parked around in protest. Nothing violent, just trucks with some Canadians behind the wheels. And what does Trudeau do? He does what no one wanted. Go figure. And he invokes the Emergency Act and makes an action to start freezing the bank accounts of these protesters and people who help them in any way. But I'll let a clip of him speak for himself. After consultation with premiers from all provinces and territories, after speaking with opposition leaders, the federal government has invoked the Emergencies Act to supplement provincial and territorial capacity to address the blockades and occupations. I want to be very clear. The scope of these measures will be time-limited, geographically targeted, as well as reasonable and proportionate to the threats they are meant to address. The Emergencies Act will be used to strengthen and support law enforcement agencies at all levels across the country. This is about keeping Canadians safe, protecting people's jobs, and restoring confidence in our institutions. Ah, yes, confidence in our institutions that disagree with peaceful protests. What a great institution that is, am I right? But let us read another article about this coming from the Edmonton Journal. If Canadians are going to somehow come together after the divisive years of Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and his many abuses of power, some amount of hard work is in order from his most ardent followers. Some will refuse to engage in such reflection, but for those who are open to difficult deliberation, Federal Court Judge Richard G. Mosley provides something of a roadmap on how to get it right. On Tuesday, Mosley ruled against the Trudeau government's use of the Emergency Act to stomp out the truckers' convoy in Ottawa in February 2022. He found the government's use of the act to be unreasonable and an unjustified infringement of individual rights. In the ruling, Mosley focused on what I consider to be the greatest outrage the Trudeau Liberals have perpetrated to date, their freezing of bank accounts and credit cards of 57 people and entities who supported and or attended the protests. Freezing the bank accounts of political opponents might well be normal behavior for brutish leaders in shabby dictatorships. To sell such a boost in Canada, Trudeau's allies had to work overtime to vilify the convoy participants as foreign-funded, white supremacist, freedom-obsessed radicals. This campaign of misinformation continued in Ottawa when the protesters were falsely accused of arson and other misdeeds. Oh, well, let us take a look at some of that misinformation that they spread, why don't we? Ottawa police are investigating an early morning arson attempt at an apartment building in Centre Town. New security footage showing two men setting the fire and barricading the doors to the building. Here's CTV's Colton Prale. Oh my God! At a Centre Town apartment in the red zone of Ottawa's protests, this unknown guardian angel stopping an apparent arson. It could have gone so wrong, and so many people would have been hurt or died um, so we're all really shaken up but 
you know, we're, we're sticking together. And Security footage shows the man across the street around 5.20 Sunday morning when he notices the fire in the building and leaps into action, kicking a box of fire starters that had been lit by two people just minutes earlier. I came downstairs on Sunday morning and kind of there were all my neighbors were around and we saw the burned fire starters and the carpet was burned. Those living in the building say they're terrified. I'm shaken, to be honest. Um, it's been a rough day and night for us. I'm just kind of dealing with the aftermath of what happened um, in our apartment. Security footage from an Algonquin Hotel apartment building shows what happened moments earlier. Two men appearing to start a fire and forcing the doors closed, sealing them with tape. Taping the door shut, setting the fire in the place where everybody would go to try to get out um, is terrorism. There's no other word. Ottawa police are now investigating the arson that apartment residents say happened just hours after a confrontation with protesters outside. We can't confirm or deny the participants and their involvement in anything um, either way. It's, um, you know, interesting coincidence that things happened right after we were told that our neighbors were confronting people. At this point, there's no proof that the men seen in the video were participating in the week-long protests happening just outside. Now, residents hoping these images can help identify the people behind the fire. I'm hoping that somebody will recognize him and that um, he'll be found and, and, and we'll get to know about his motivations and intentions behind this. I'm hoping it's kind of a lone wolf situation. And sending a thank you to the man who kept them safe. I just want to say thank you for looking out for your community and doing the right thing. Colton Prale, CTV News. Police said there is no information indicating Wernick was involved in any way with the convoy protest, which was ongoing at the time. A 21-year-old man was arrested last month and also faces arson and mischief charges in this case. Police said there was no information linking him to the convoy protest either. So, what happened? Well, as I see it, is that stuff like this did nothing but add fuel to the fire while Trudeau was actively hating on the Freedom Convoy, which then turned something that had nothing to do with the Freedom Convoy into something that the convoy planned. Trudeau, once again, does not care about Canadians. He in fact cares so little about the Canadians that when the convoy happened, you, you want to know what the coward did? He left. Like, no joke, our leader just up and left the country because he didn't like the haters. Here, I'll read this out from the Daily Mail. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and his family have left their home in the Nationals' capital, Ottawa, for a secret location as up to 50,000 truckers gather to protest against the country's vaccine mandate and COVID lockdowns. Hundreds of truckers drove their giant rigs into the Canadian capital, Ottawa, on Saturday as part of a self-titled Freedom Convoy, which started as a protest against vaccine mandates required to cross the U.S. border. Days earlier, he had called the truckers headed for the city a small fringe minority, before the convoy of hundreds of vehicles grew up to 45 miles long as it made its way to the capital. Flying the Canadian flag, waving banners demanding freedom, and chanting slogans against Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, the truckers were joined by thousands of other protesters angered not only by COVID-19 restrictions, but by broader discontent with the government. Oh, discontent with the government, you say? Well, I wonder how much more discontent they have now when he once again is spending $220,000 on airplane food alone. So, to put this all into perspective, just the stuff that I've listed here. He's taken charity money worth $425,000, and then he's frozen the accounts of people peacefully protesting, and now he is spending our taxpaying dollars to fund his $220,000 expenditure for food, no less. I repeat, Trudeau is not pro-Canadians, but I would in fact call him anti-Canadian with how he acts. And he's a fraud. He claims to be for the young Canadians when it comes to buying a home, yet he's being scandalous with charity money and spending our taxpaying dollars to fund his life. Trudeau only cares about himself and nobody else. He's supposed to be our leader, yet he runs off scared when we come knocking for a peaceful conversation. 
But I think that it is about time that I share that good and juicy news that has come piping hot out of the oven. Trudeau has lost a long liberal stronghold riding. It actually dates to being a stronghold for 30 years, but has recently come crashing down to the conservatives during the by-elections on Monday. Now, isn't that just sweet? But I think that that is just about it for this. Let me know what you're thinking down below. And while you're down there, if you agree with the message, why not just hit the like button to show appreciation and consider subscribing to hear more news coverage in the future. But until then, have a good one.